In this video, we are going to look at view cell renderers and AG Grid. That's the way of allowing you to put your own view component inside a cell. We'll start with this AG Grid view application on the left hand side. You'll see that we have imported a renderer function to create V nodes. We have some row data, some column defs, and a default column def bound into the grid. We are also loading some data from a server, and on the right hand side, we can see our application running. We will start by creating a simple view component to say hello world and register it and use it on the athlete column by passing the component to the column definition property called cell renderer. On the right, you can see athlete column is using simple comp and saying hello world. And I know saying hello world is not very useful. So let's have a look at what params grid passes to the renderer by printing them to our console. If we open our dev console here, we can see that it's printed once for each row. Let's just open one of them and we can see all this juicy stuff that's provided to us. If you want to know what all of these are, check out the documentation. All right, let's bring our attention to the value. This is the value that should be displayed inside the cell. I'll close down and update simple comp to display the value. Save. And now athlete cell value is displayed same as before, but by using simple comp to display the value. Why don't we have some fun with components and make a fun component? It will return a cell value and I will add two buttons with click events and event handlers. When I click the button, it will return the button symbol and a cell value. Now that I have the fun component, let's import it, register, add it to the athlete column and all of these buttons now appear on every cell that's using the fun component. If I click on a button, you can see all the information from the button and the params, the symbol and the athlete name. And you probably realized by now that this is just a view component, which gives you a lot of freedom to do whatever you like. Let's have a closer look at the column definitions. Right now, the cell renderer is used for exactly one column, which is the athlete. I will put it onto age column as well, and we can see buttons appear. Now, why don't we remove it from the individual columns and use it at the default column level to appear on all columns? Maybe there's a column where you don't want the renderer to be used. We can override the default inside column def and set the cell renderer to null for the specific column. Now I'll put the same renderer onto two columns and talk about cell params. Let's quickly add cell renderer params, button text amazing and grand. I'm going to change the comp so it only has one button and button text will come from params. So what's happening here is we are passing the button text to cell renderer params. And in the renderer, we are accessing the button text from the params. Now you can see the fun component used in two places in the athlete column and in age column, but it's configured a bit differently. Here we have the amazing button and there we have the grand button. So far we have only used composition API components. We can also have options API components. I will make one quickly to show you. We have now fun component using composition API and options component using options API. They are both configured in the grid the same way and the grid will work with both. You might have noticed that I did not directly reference any of the components, but instead registered them. That is because we do not recommend direct component referencing. At the moment it's supported, but this will be deprecated in the future releases. However, you can inline components for a quick mockup app. I will inline simple comp and make some changes and add it to the country column. And now you can see country column is in bold. So right now we've got three columns with components. We've got the fun component, we've got the options component, and we've got the simple component. But what if we want to use two components inside the same column, have different components for each row based on the data? This can be achieved with a cell renderer selector. Let me show you how. This is the selector function. It's provided instead of a cell renderer. The selector function gets params. The values inside here are actually the same values that you get as the params inside a cell renderer. We are looking at the value and if the value is 2000, we use the fun component. And if the value is 2008, then we'll use the options component. And you can see that here underneath the year column, whenever we have 2008, we've got pull button. And whenever we got 2000, we've got push button. 
The return type here is an object. Whatever we specify for the component will be used as a cell renderer. So this property here is equivalent to the cell renderer property. We could also specify parameters to pass to the renderer in here, and those could be used inside the cell renderer for that particular row in that column. And now you are one with the force of the grid. Oh, and we finished this video of getting started with cell renderers inside AG Grid in view. We saw how to create a simple locally declared inline cell renderer using composition API. We created two externalized single file components, one with composition API and the other one with options API. We saw how to configure components and columns. We also provided parameters to the individual cell renderers. And we also saw how to use cell renderer selector to specify a different cell renderer for each row. If you like what you saw, please comment, please share, tell your friends, may the force of the grid be with you. Thank <music> you.